Hey guys, and welcome to Talking About Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I want to talk to you guys about esports and tournaments, because this week is quite a busy one for Gwent esports. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is happening tomorrow on Thursday at 8pm CEST, and that is the TGI, or Gwentleman Invitational Semi-Finals and Grand Finals. So for those of you guys who don't know about the Gwentleman Invitational. It's a tournament that's been going on for the last about seven weeks now and there's a bunch of teams, there were 50 teams in total, that consi consisted of three players per team and the teams were playing against each other for six weeks in a Swiss format which is where teams match up against each other based on their win rates and play and then eventually you get a top 16 which will move on to a bracketed format which is currently the thing that's happening which we have the semi-finals and grand finals for. And you know there are a lot of community members involved, players like Merchant, Mogwai, JJ Pasak for example, Crokies was in there, Freddy Babes, just to name a few names, or maybe you guys know who some of these people are, but a lot of community members um, and also a lot of people who maybe weren't quite so known in the competitive scene were involved and this has been whittled down now to the final four which is then going to go on to the final one team and the interesting thing about this is because it's teams of three players they're all on like Skype for example together communicating about the plays so it's a kind of team-based tournament which is really cool and they're kind of going on to win a final prize which was crowdfunded and I think is about a thousand dollars now in total prizing for the tournament so it's a really interesting tournament to watch and it's also a good way to keep up to date with the tournament side of Gwent and see kind of the kind of decks that people are bringing to a tournament format rather than to a ladder format. And I am actually hosting, I've been hosting for the last about four weeks, uh, the TGI on the Gwentleman channel. So I'll be hosting that, doing a little bit of analysis, doing a little bit of kind of introductory stuff and basically kind of presenting. So if you're interested in checking that out, that is like I say on Gwentleman at 8 p.m. CST. But the teams we have now in the semi-finals are Team Pixie, which consists of Dunkero, Crash Overlord, and I'm in a bear suit, versus Team Finland, which are our Finnish team, obviously, uh, called Ira, Wompy, and Dead17. So that's the first matchup. And then we also have the sixth faction, which is a Korean Gwent team. So Korean Gwent has actually been doing really well in this tournament. This is Gravekeeper, uh, y uh, I think it's Yan Hyang and... In Sangpa, I'm probably saying these wrong, but those are the three players, and they're playing against Team GFR, which consists of uh, McLogan, Go Akioni, and Shadow A's. So these are our kind of finalists, and a lot of these players maybe aren't that well known to you guys yet, but they've kind of really made their mark in the TGI, and I think that they are players that are definitely worth keeping an eye on. Personally, I think, or I would like the sixth faction to win. I think they've been doing really well in the tournament as a whole. I've obviously been following it with hosting. I think that they play really clean. I think that they know their stuff. And I think this would be a really good sign to CDPR that there's a demand for Gwent in Korea. Um, and that would maybe encourage them to invest in their Asian markets a little bit. Especially because regions like Asia and Australia have a harder time, I think, getting involved in esports because of their geographical location. Which brings me nicely to talk about Gwent Slam, which is the first tournament that is licensed by CDPR. So that means that you have the opportunity to win crown points. Now, if you don't know about crown points, I talked about this in a previous video uh, when I talked about tournaments, but this is basically the structure that allows you to compete on at CDPR's uh, own tournaments. You earn crown points through various means, such as the Pro Ladder, which I'm sure lots of you know about, but also through tournaments. And the first licensed one, Gwent Slam, is being organized by Life Coach and is actually taking place this weekend. I believe the cast starts at 1 p.m. CEST on Saturday and then same again on Sunday, but that'll be this weekend. And Gwent, Gwent Slam is really interesting, but it's also been a little bit controversial because they have invitee spots. So if you guys are kind of out of the scene, basically there was some controversy about how people were earning crown points, but they could be invited. So, you know, there was no kind of merit involved to getting these places. And that it was just a case of if you're friends with the organizers, then potentially you could earn crown points and that would get you a head start into esports. And I'm not really going to talk about that today, but I do want to talk about the kind of geographical side of things because with Gwent Slam being a licensed tournament, players aren't paid to get there. Which is kind of fair enough, I understand why that is, because it's expensive to pay for a bunch of players to come somewhere. But on the flip side, it means that because Gwent Slam is taking place in Europe, players from, say, Australia, um, Asia, and America to a certain extent as well, are disadvantaged in that if they can't afford to go, even if they qualify, then 
they can kind of miss out on entry into Gwent esports. And this is kind of what this tournament is. It is an entry into Gwent as an esport. And if players want to be competitive, it's important to allow them to have that. So I'm a little, that's my kind of only concern about Gwent Slam. But, you know, if there's licensed tournaments in other regions, if there happens to be one in Australia or in Asia or in America, obviously that disadvantages the regions that can't get to that tournament. So, so long as there's multiple tournaments in multiple regions, that's fine by me. So moving on to talk a little bit about Gwent Slam. Gwent Slam has eight players entering. We have Game King. He was a qualifier for Gwent Together, which I think was one of Life Coach's other tournaments that he did, not a licensed one, but one that he ran himself. I think he's been competitive in some of the smaller Gwent tournaments that have been on the scene. So he's one of the players. Then if you watch Gwent Open, you'll know about Shaggy. Shaggy went to Gamescom and at Gamescom, they had like a wildcard bracket that allowed you to qualify for the Gwent Open. So the Gwent Open, it was the top seven from the pro ladder, not the pro ladder, sorry, the regular ladder. We didn't have a pro ladder at this point. So top seven from the ladder and then the uh, wild card where he basically played through a tournament at Gamescom, qualified into the Gwent Open, then went through the Gwent Open to qualify to, to win basically. So he came he came from kind of rather than qualifying through the the ladder, he qualified through being at this other tournament. And so that kind of went to show that CDPR's maybe method of qualification was questionable. But he is a player who's kind of earned his spot. He's got a lot of renown. Then we had the open qualifiers. There were two of these actually, uh, which were won by Freddy Babes and Impetuous Panda, which are both members members of Gwendolyn. Um, and these, I'm actually like, I feel like this must have been really tough because I think it was something like 512 competitors down to one in a bracket. And personally, I feel like brackets aren't the best way to qualify for things simply because of the coin flip and the effect that has on Gwent. But having this system by which you could enter the tournament. Um, these players, you know, they, they played Gwent for like a good chunk of hours because obviously tournaments take time and the more players, the more time. Um, and they've really kind of shown their own. They're both streamers. You can watch them playing on Twitch. I've seen both of them. They're both very knowledgeable about the game. Uh, Impetuous Panda does some casting for TGI. He's very, like he knows a lot of stuff about the game. Freddy is super chill. And uh, congratulations to both these players. Again, I feel like, I feel like they definitely earned their spots. Although I will say that maybe the tournament method of earning spots is not as good as say a Swiss format, which I personally approve of. Um, so I'm really excited to see both of them play. Then there is uh, Adzikov, I think is how you say it. And Adzikov is first on the pro ladder and he was quite clearly first on the pro ladder. If you look at the kind of standings of the pro ladder, I think the cutoff was the 19th of uh, September, but he was a good couple hundred MMR above the rest of the players and clearly the pro ladder, I think, is a better method of qualification than the old ladder was. So the old ladder, which was used to qualify for Gwent Open. Um, Adzikov, he had really strong MMR across the board. The pro ladder, you have to play games with multiple factions. You basically go to show that you're not just good at playing one faction, you're good at playing multiple factions, uh, which suggests that you're a better rounded, more well-rounded Gwent player. And uh, so he was the winner of that, and that's how he's qualified for Gwent Slam. And then we have invitees. And this is, I guess, the controversial side of things. This is the thing that people are maybe, you know, unsure of. I mean, there's this guy called Swim. He got invited. I really, you know, I don't, I don't know who he is, but I guess people think he's kind of good at Gwent. No. So Swim is obviously a well-known community member, deck builder, um, and he's been invited to the tournament. And I think people are a little bit questionable about invitees because obviously they can then go on to earn crown points. I don't think you can earn crown points in the first tournament that you play, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, if he goes on to win this tournament, he could then qualify for other tournaments. And people are maybe a little bit questionable about these players because they haven't necessarily earned their way into the tournament like some of the other players. On the flip side, invitees, I think are a really good way to bring hype to a tournament. Like Swim has a lot of subscribers. He has a lot of followers uh, on Twitch, for example. He is a well-known member of the community. And I think, you know, people respect his knowledge for the game. And so invitees as a way of building hype around Gwent are really good because people who like Swim are gonna want to see him compete, right? So that is, I guess, the benefit to invitees is that it can bring exposure and it can bring hype, which is good for Gwent as an esport and as a tournament. And as these tournaments are, I guess, smaller in size in that, you know, you have to qualify through them to earn crown points, having invitees show up every so often and having different invitees, so long as your invitees aren't always the same people, I feel like it's probably okay. Uh, similarly, we have Tides of Time, who I believe is a popular Hearthstone player. He has a lot of followers on Twitch. I think he has something like 150,000 followers. So again, this is kind of maybe more of an exposure invite. I don't know, you know, how much he knows about Gwent. I know that he enjoys Gwent, but I don't know personally the kind of depth of his 
skill compared to say some of these other players who have qualified or I've seen streaming or what have you. And then Melee Man is a popular Russian player, I think also has a background in Hearthstone. Um, so that's our kind of players and then they're going to go into a bracket and then over this weekend we'll find out who is going to win. I personally am probably supporting, this is a tough one, this is a tough one. I don't know, like I would like to see Gwentleman do well. They obviously invite me to host on TGI, which is very kind of them. And I'm actually a regular host now for their talk show, which takes place on Thursdays. Not this Thursday, because we have TGI, but next Thursday, so I'll be on that on Thursdays from 10 p.m. CEST on the Gwentleman channel. So I feel like I got to support my Gwentleman boys, but then I got to pick which one. Do I support Swim, Freddy, or Panda? Um, I don't know, I don't know. I think, I think I'm gonna support, ooh, I think I'm gonna cheer for Impetuous Panda. We're gonna go for Panda this, this time. Sorry, Swim and Freddy. But that's who I'm gonna support. Like, who are you guys interested in seeing playing? Who do you want to win? Let me know in the comments below. And I think either way, regardless of how you feel about any of the players, any of the system in which Gwent Slam was created or anything like that, life coach and all that, I think this will be a good tournament to watch to see, again, competitive Gwent. And it'll be a really good way to see the kind of different decks that people bring, the kind of strategies that people use in competitive Gwent. And I think for me as a content creator, it's a really good way to I guess see some other strategies, see how other people look at the game, get some ideas, and I think it'll be a really fun tournament to watch. I think it's also worth, for me, being aware of competitive Gwent, or for yourself as a player, just to kind of get some ideas of how to improve, and maybe different ideas how to play decks, or different kind of strategies involved, and for me, Gwent Esports is one of these things that is really cool, and is definitely worth keeping up to date on, either in smaller tournaments like, um, the Gwentleman Open, which I think happens at the end of the week. I talk about Gwentleman a lot, but they have a monthly tournament, the Gwentleman Open, which anyone can sign up for. Or you, you know, just watching tournaments like the Gwentleman Invitational, which was invite only, or stuff like Gwent Slam, which ultimately you can try and qualify for, you know, like there were open qualifiers, this big bracket that Freddy and Impetuous Panda used to qualify in. You guys could have entered for these two, and these are really great opportunities, even if you just want to practice as a player. Maybe you don't want to be the very best of the very best, but you can still sign up into these tournaments to see how you fare in a more competitive setting, and I think it gives you a different flavor uh, of Gwent compared to, say, the ladder, the pro ladder, and the regular rank ladder. And these are both good things. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. The last thing I want to mention very quickly um, is YouTube now has sponsorship. <laughs> so this is just going to be like the shameless sellout section. But basically, if you go to gaming.youtube.com forward slash Jagoras, which will be my YouTube gaming channel, uh, you now have subscriptions on YouTube like you do on Twitch. Now, I'm not gonna start live streaming on YouTube. I am still, you know, a Twitch live streamer. If you wanna see me live streaming, I will be on Twitch. But if you're not interested in Twitch at all, but you do wanna support me as a content creator, you can now do that through YouTube directly through sponsorships. These will give you, I believe, emotes that you can use in other live streams. Uh, it's dependent on how many sponsors I get. I will definitely add emotes though to my YouTube if I get sponsors. Um, but basically, if you enjoy the content that I make and you wanna support me as a creator directly, uh, that is an option for you guys. So like I said, youtube.com, wait, gaming.youtube.com forward slash and there'll be a link in the description below, um, as well as links to Gwentleman and Life Coach for if you want to watch the tournaments. I will definitely be there, I'll be in chat, so if you wanna come say hi to me, then that is also where we can hang out, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's kind of everything I want to say about tournaments, about Gwent Slam, about the Gwentleman Invitational, and about sponsorships. So let me know how you guys feel about Gwent Slam, about maybe the controversy, about Gwentleman Invitational and all that in the comments below, who you want to win. I'm cheering for, like I said, the sixth faction, Team Korea and Impetuous Panda. Let's go Gwentleman, I guess. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe hit that thumbs up button. You can always subscribe to the channel. You can always sponsor the channel. Uh, or you can catch me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras. And on Twitter, at Jagoras. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.